In some cases, the most intriguing adventures can be found not in the remote rural corners of a state, but rather in its oldest, most heavily developed urban areas. In New Jersey, one such place is a still pool of water which lies beneath the crashing Great Falls of the Passaic River in Patterson. Patterson may be a rough and gritty city, but at its heart is the wild and primordial oasis of the Great Falls. Torrents of roiled water cascade down from the 77-foot-tall basalt cliffs, sending a swirling mist of spray skyward through the craggy chasm. Early Pattersonians would eventually harness this raw power to run their mills, but they would never tame the awesome force of the falls. Down in the pools below the falls is another world, a world of light and shadow, mystery and danger. There the city ceases to exist and you find yourself in a rugged and potentially hazardous place. The only way to get to this lost and forgotten world is through a narrow and treacherous cleft in the rock known as the Devil's Pathway. Native Patterson historian Nick Sunday asked Weird New Jersey to visit the Devil's Pathway with him, enticing us with the story of four golden daggers in the shape of crucifixes that had recently been found in a pool at its bottom. Nick theorized that the daggers may have been used by Catholic or Greek Orthodox priests for ceremonial rituals around the turn of the last century. The Devil's Pathway is a sort of sacred place, he told us. It takes some doing to get down there, but the priests could have used the Devil's Pathway for some sort of ritual or exorcism. The falls are a mystical place, he said, where your senses are suspended. You don't hear airplanes or cars down there. All you hear are the falls. It sort of changes you, and I guess it would be a good place to conduct such a ceremony. To reach the pool, Nick said, one must traverse the narrow crevasse of the Devil's Pathway, which cuts through the rock to a basin of water located just above the turbulent plunge pool at the very base of the falls. The depth of the water in the basin is regulated by a massive hydroelectric power plant which is situated adjacent to the falls and the pool is revealed only when the power plant keeps the level of the river low. Despite the crashing falls all around it, the surface of the water in the basin is said to be remarkably still. We met Nick Sunday at the top of the Great Falls on a bitterly cold winter day. The Passaic River was at full volume, its foamy cascade plunging mightily into the gaping maw of the ravine, crashing angrily onto the monstrous boulders below. A mist of freezing spray rose up through the chasm, depositing an icy crust upon everything at the top of the falls. Nick looked to be about 60 years old, with a head of bushy gray hair. The brown tweed blazer and black wool scarf he wore made him look more like an Ivy League college professor than an urban explorer. It's extremely dangerous if you're alone, he shouted over the din of the raging falls. But if you're with someone, it's just a little mountain climbing. The pathway is wide enough, you can see your way through it. You just don't want to take any unnecessary chances, you've got to be careful. It helps to have a little bit of rope. We followed Nick over a fence of black iron spikes and down to the crest at the top of the falls. The rising mist enshrouded us as we stood perched at the edge of the precipice. A treacherous glaze of ice coated the dark, wet rocks on which we stood, poised before the abyss. Holding a few flimsy lengths of rope in one hand, Nick raised a finger and pointed to a cleft in the wall of the cliff beneath us. There it is, he shouted excitedly at the top of his voice, the devil's pathway. It leads all the way down to the bottom. You ready to go in? As he said this, he jumped into the cleavage of stone and began scrambling further down the ravine. The mist rising from the tumult below started to envelop him when he was still just a few feet away. It was at this point that I began to wonder if perhaps Mr. Nick Sunday might actually be totally insane. If this precarious pathway that we'd found ourselves in did indeed lead to the bottom of those plummeting falls, I realized then that it was the last place I wanted to go. Nick, I shouted down into the gully, I think I'll wait till next spring. Rather than charging headlong into the jaws of a watery grave, we opted instead to walk over the chasm bridge to the power plant to speak with Billy DePillo the man who had discovered the mysterious daggers in the pool at the base of the Devil's Pathway. 
Billy works alone at the power plant most of the time, controlling the flow of water virtually single-handedly, and he knows every inch of the falls and the Devil's Pathway. He welcomed us into the impressive brick building built in 1902 and showed us the daggers that he'd found. And that's actually uh, St. Michael's. You know, the one that's uh, slain Satan, I guess? That'd be a St. Michael's dagger. Is this brass? Solid brass. Now, uh, you found this in the pool at the bottom of the pathway? Yeah, down at the bottom of the falls. Right. During the low water of the spring last Uh year, you know, climbing down on the rocks and stuff, I I was down at the base of the fall. Did you ever find anything else in that area? Uh, Just in the way of daggers, I actually pulled out four. Right. There's four. Oh, you said two. Did you you find all four at the same time? Uh, Basically, yeah, in the same area. And that, that's not a letter opener, <laughs> you know. They must have been put down there. They couldn't have been, like, thrown because they would have all ended up in different places, right? Like, right. some threw them off the bridge. We keep 200 place. cubic feet of water per second going over that water. So that's 200 cubic feet of water. That's a lot of pressure and a lot of movement. These were just ended up in one spot. I mean, they yeah. could have been... Uh, you know, I see parts of cars, refrigerators, wow. everything come down this river, and it ends up, you know, being moved. Mm-hmm. I watched it, you know, it's just amazing. Yeah. And then to find all these in one spot. We asked Billy if he'd pulled anything else of interest out of the river, and he showed us a doll that he'd found wrapped in clear plastic and gagged with a ribbon across its mouth. The hands were tied behind its back, and the legs were also wrapped and bound. He believes it could be a voodoo doll. So do you got a name for that voodoo doll? or? Oh, i just been calling it Wilson. Wilson? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that one. Because usually 99% of the time, I'm here by myself. Yeah. It's a one-man operation, you know. Took a lot of time to do that. Oh, yeah. What are they, real teeth? Little fingernails, the whole nine yards. But she came down the river. When we pulled it out of the river, it was wrapped up in clear plastic. It was gagged. It had a a ribbon across its mouth. The hands were tied behind its back, and the legs were also wrapped and tied. (laughs) Um, I took it out. I'm like, what, you know, what is this? And I cut open the plastic, and I seen it, and I untied it and all that. And it was like, to me, it's a cute little doll. And I, I was just looking at the craftsmanship, you know, the fingernails, and, you know, even gave it boobs and, you know, the beads and everything. And I'm like, wow, this is something. Why would somebody want to throw it in? And then the, that weekend, uh, behind Libby's, the uh, hot dog place, uh, my one friend Tom Prasago up, uh, up the street uh, turned around and said, you hear about the dead body they pulled out behind Libby's, a lady. And I'm like, you got to be kidding. I said, I got this weird looking doll that came down. So I asked some people about it and they called it a, they said it's a voodoo doll, has a little devil beads on it and stuff. And, you know, 99% of the people that I've talked to turned around and said, get rid of it. It's really heavy. I wouldn't even touch that thing. Hey, no? did you ever cut it open and see what's inside? What yeah. do you think it's stuffed with? It really no seems heavy. Straw? I thought you weren't going to touch it. <laughs> he said he didn't want to touch it. <laughs> Only one hand. Oh, there goes the dress. Only one hand. Uh-oh. What's that? <laughs> but, you know, it's a nice. Somebody took a lot of time with this. And they, then they wrapped it. They t- it was the, tied. The, the legs were tied, right? right? And the arms were actually tied. It was actually wrapped up like this. Uh-huh. And it actually had a thing around it, and it was all in clear plastic wrapped up tight. And you found this one. And it okay. came down just like this, wrapped up, and it was in clear plastic. Right. So when we do the trash rack outside, pulling up the garbage, this came up like this. And that's what they like the And I looked at it. Valve and, huh? the, the, the trash rack? Yeah, it's the intake, intake for the uh, hydro plant. And when it came in like this, I'm like, well, and you, know, you see it wrapped up in yeah. plastic. You know. Any bodies go over the, the main falls that don't? get into the intake valves? Yeah, since 1986, I think we've retrieved three bodies. So you think they were suicides or just voodoo? No, I don't know. (laughs) 
weekend after Puerto Rican Day Parade, when we do our trash rack, we always get the dead roosters that lose in the fights. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, some the one year we pulled out like 40 dead roosters. My God, must have been a hell of a fight. Yeah, must have been a great weekend. <laughs> <laughs> what other strange and mysterious artifacts might still lay beneath the crashing waters of Patterson's Great Falls waiting to be discovered? That question can only be answered by those adventurous or foolhardy enough to brave an expedition into the Devil's Pathway.